Let's go ahead and look at another concept in SIF language, which is called type erasers. Now, type erasers are not that common, but you will see that sometime you will see type erasers to solve your problem. Let's go ahead and create our basic application, and then you will see what kind of a problems type erasers can solve. Let's consider a scenario that we are just trying to display something on the screen. And we do have different kind of cells. So probably we are using a Swift UI or even a UI kit application, and we have different kind of cells. So I'm just going to go ahead and say configurable cell. In order to configure a cell, you need to pass in a model, but model can be any type. So that's why we are making sure it is a associated type. A configurable cell protocol will also have a configure function where you can simply pass in the model and the configure function can configure the cell, basically providing the data to the different properties of the cell so the cell can display everything on the screen. Based on configurable cell, we will create two concrete implementations. One of them will be student cell, which is going to be conforming to the configurable cell and it is also going to be taking in the user struct. Let's go ahead and create a user struct. Great. So this is our student cell, which conforms to configurable cell. Just like student cell, we will go ahead and also create one for the staff. Maybe their display and configurations are different. Great. Now, what about if we want to create all the cells or get all the cells and display them? So I will create cells as an array. And inside the array, I will go ahead and create a student cell as well as the staff cell. If I try to do that, it's not really going to work. And the reason it's not working is because student cell and staff cell, they both belong to configurable cell, which contains the associated type. So we don't really know what the type will be. And that's why it's not really allowed to put these things. What about if we hard code this and say, well, these, these values will be configurable cells. So now we are saying that all the values that goes into the cells variable, they are configurable cell. Now let's see what error is now. And you can see that due to the associated type and generic constraint requirements in our configurable cell, we can't mix and match two different cells together. Even though both student cell and the staff cell belongs to configurable cell, they cannot be put in the same array because in order to be in the array, they both have to have a same type, and they don't. So how can we solve these kind of problems? Now, one way to solve this problem is by using type erasers. The whole point of using type eraser is to put your type inside a box and expose a different type. So let's go ahead and create another type, and we will call it any configurable. You have already seen type erasers like any view and any sequence and you know any iterator and all of those different things. So over here, we are creating our own type eraser called configurable cell. This is going to be conforming to configurable cell. Now we do need to provide the type alias for the model. So let's go ahead and provide type alias model. And we don't know what the model type will be, so we have to put any. Apart from that, we will create an initializer. Again, in the initializer, the things that you can pass in the initializer, they must conform to configurable cell. We will pass a configurable cell, which will be of type T. Great. Now, from our any configurable, we do need to expose functions like configure. 
you can see that I am conforming to configurable cell, so I must implement the configure function. So here's the configure function. But how do we know that this configure function is called on the correct concrete type? For that, we will have to create a closure. So let's go ahead and create a closure. And we will simply say configure cell closure. This closure is going to get any type and it's going to return nothing. And from inside the initializer, we can initialize our configurable closure. We will get a certain model because your closure can get something. And using that model, we can go ahead and create an actual model, which means that our model can be casted as t with the type dot model. Else we will do nothing. We will simply return it. We will go ahead and call configurable cell dot configure and we will pass in the model. So this way we have created the any configurable which kind of box your own type behind its own type and allows to call child functions or nested functions from within. So now I can go and call configure cell closure and pass in the actual model. Now let's go ahead and create our cells. Now in the cell, we can go ahead and now put any configurable. And we need to pass in a configurable cell, which in this case can be student cell. And we can also again call any configurable and pass in another cell, which can be staff cell. So you can see that even though the type of student cell and the staff cells are different, we were able to hide their type, erase their type behind any configurable. So in the array, you end up being any configurable and the inner type the inside the box is student cell and the staff cell. You can go ahead and loop through it or cells dot for each. And you can see that I can call configure. Now, if you had an array of models, you can simply pass it right over here. So this is how you will hide your type behind the some other type. It's also known as erasing the type. It is not that common that you are using this particular procedure to hide your type. Uh, the type eraser is not that common, but if you ever face this kind of a scenario, you can use type erasers in Swift language to solve your problems. Hey, if you want to support my channel, then check out my new Patreon page. You can uh, sign up for a membership for $10 a month. This is just for supporting my work. This will keep me going. This will allow me to produce more videos on a more frequent schedule. And it will also allow me to create Udemy courses. Uh, so go to patreon.com. The link is in the YouTube description and sign up. I will also send you articles and early access discounted coupons. Thank you so much and thank you for all your support.